Here he is. We're, we're going to welcome in Mark right now. He's a busy man, this guy. Absolutely. I, I can tell you this. Mark Lamping, the uh, president of the Jaguars. Are, are you sleeping hey at all? Are you getting sleep? Are you, no, no, what, I what, what are you doing? No, <laughs> Sleep's awesome. overrated, isn't it? I need sleep. But, <laughs> <laughs> no, I just, I'm just not the first one in the office in the morning. So. <laughs> <laughs> How are you? Good to see you. I'm doing good. How are you guys? Oh, we're doing great. I, I Wonderful. Thought, yeah, I thought you did a fantastic job with that thing. And I'm, I'm not saying that just because you're sitting here. I, I thought uh, you answered uh, if you can answer a lot of questions before they're asked, Mark, yeah. that's a good thing. I thought you did. How did you feel everything went with the city council? It went great. I mean, I think it's been, uh, it's a, it's been a collaborative effort. I mean, it's nice that you say that about us, but this, this doesn't happen without the uh, cooperation and the, the commitment from uh, starting with the mayor and through her entire staff. And it's been a, it's been a really good process. You know, it's, uh, there hasn't been a lot of angst, mm -hmm. which is good. Um, attribute that to the fact that when we went into this, both sides wanted the same outcome. Yeah. You know, our interests were aligned, and uh, we have a tremendous amount of respect for each other. There was, uh, we both understood that for something to make sense, it has to work for all of us, not just for the city or not just for the Jaguars. It needs to work for the community. It needs to work for the city, and it needs to work for the Jaguars. Um, the... Uh, there were there were times where we obviously disagreed, you know. Frank, you about as long as I have, and yep, yep. you know, uh, long, long, successful marriages. But you still have disagreements right. as you as you go through that uh, go through that period. And we had plenty of those, but they never rose to the level where there was any uh, uh, disrespect or any personal animosity. And I think that helped um, that there wasn't any posturing, so there wasn't a lot of uh, gamesmanship or. People planting stories to try to gain an advantage, and uh, you know, I think we ended up exactly where both parties um, in, uh, hoped to end up. Uh, there's a perfect deal, but I've said there's a perfect outcome, and the perfect outcome is against all doubters that you have the Jaguars on the cusp of being committed to Northeast Florida for 30 plus years, and uh, you know, many people look back and. Uh, Jacksonville became an NFL city against all odds. And I think there were people that 10, 15 years ago gave the odds of the, the Jaguars staying in Jacksonville. The odds would be very low. And yet they've all, they potentially have all been proven wrong. And uh, this, was, this, is the, this was the key step to unlock that, uh, uh, that possibility. And as you know, we've been talking about it now for over eight years. We started this dialogue back in 2016 uh, so that we would have plenty of time and not be faced with the drama that comes from a team getting to the last couple of years of its lease and still having a stadium uh, problem because that's what leads to really bad outcomes for, uh, for cities. And, you know, Shad was committed to not let that happen in Jacksonville and the mayor was committed to not letting that happen in Jacksonville either. And it was that, that common ground, which I think led us to what we believe uh, is a very fair and balanced deal. I know that the mayor agrees with that and we'll just wait and see where it goes from here. Mark, you guys talked out from the outset about this can't just be a stadium. What elements of the deal really excite you from a community standpoint? How important was that for Shah to have that investment into the community, things that are outside of the stadium? Yeah, there's really two things, two things there. We said uh, from the beginning, and the mayor absolutely agreed, previous administration agreed as well, uh, that if all we end up with, we're going to go through all of this, this, this effort um, to do a major project, and if all we get out of it is a shiny new stadium, uh, then I think we've uh, missed a huge opportunity. So, yes, it needs to, to, to solve the Jaguars issue. It needs to solve a city issue that it's facing right now, but, it all, but the benefits of this should be felt throughout the, uh, the community. So, that, so the community benefits piece was, was always a commitment for Chad. It started the Jaguars being went back to when the large we were there. Uh, uh, with their partners, the involvement in the community has always been a big, big part of what we do. The second piece of it, and the thing that we really got excited about, I mean, you, you think about this, the, the, the Four Seasons project across the street from the stadium, and you can see it coming out of the ground. You see the three major cranes that are there. That is the single largest private investment in the history of downtown Jacksonville. Uh, that will be exceeded by the private investment that goes into the stadium, and the combination of those two will represent in excess of $1 billion of private investment, thanks to Shad Khan and his family. And uh, um, to, to, to know that the city's commitment to downtown development is real 
uh, and because there, cause there's a lot of little things that have happened. Uh, people say there's nothing going on downtown. There isn't like this big home run project, but there's a lot of singles and doubles happening downtown, thanks to a lot of uh, developers that are interested in, in downtown. But the one thing that I think we've been looking for is some real tangible evidence that there's going to be an investment in the infrastructure of downtown. And, you know, you look no further than what we've been staring at for uh, since the day that I got here in Jacksonville. And the, uh, the undeveloped property that extends uh, from downtown almost all the way out to the sports complex on the, on, on the North Bank. So when the city was talking about their investment in the community and part of that investment being completing the parks on the, 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 the North Bank, Shad heard that as they really are committed to downtown development. And it gave him even more confidence to go forward with, uh, again, what will be the single largest private investment in the history of uh, downtown Jacksonville. Mark Lampy with us, Jaguars president. He will uh, host uh, um, the first of five community huddles here at Mandarin High School. It starts at 6 o'clock, so you still got time to get over here, and you're going to enjoy it uh, if you do. Okay, I'm very confident the city council is going to pass it, the NFL is going to pass it. I'm excited. Are you confident? I mean, are, are, do you feel, I mean, you had to feel good about how it went last night in front of them. Well, I'm as confident uh, as I was at the uh, start of the process Okay. because I, I knew that we were starting from the right baseline. So my confidence level really hasn't varied through the entire process. Part of that may have been um, I didn't want my life to be miserable thinking that we weren't going to get yeah, this yeah, no, done. I get it. I get it. And I get uh, it. Failure, yeah. failure really hasn't been an option, so let's just assume that, that failure is not going to occur. Um, I, feel, I feel really good because I know we're entering the final phase, mm-hmm. and we've been at this for years. And now we have a chance, uh, which we think is a, a really good proposal. Um, Shad wanted to ensure we gave it our best shot to make sure it happened. We've done that. And, uh, you know, in a matter of months, we'll have resolution. What kind of guidance does the league give you on what they're looking to see in terms of making sure that you get the 24 owner, the votes that you need to ratify it? Well, the league obviously do, uh, will not allow you to make uh, – agreements that are in violation of the league's bylaws. So there's a lot of things that, you know, and I'm, I'm sure we'll talk about London here in a second. I'll reference one of those bylaws. Yeah. that. Uh, so the league will simply not allow you to, to violate any of those. And then, as we've been saying from the beginning, you know, uh, whether, you, whether, whether you like it or don't like it, the NFL is set up as a league that sort of protects itself from itself. And that's why no individual team owner can commit to keep his games in a city and sign a lease without getting 75% of the other owners to agree to that. And, and part of that is that on not wanting teams to set bad precedents that other teams uh, may have to, uh, may have to follow. And uh, so the, you know, we haven't gotten a lot of guidance in that regard because we've been around for so long. We know what the other deals are. We know uh, that the, the owners will look at this through the lens of what have other city similar size of Jacksonville done to solve their stadium problem and uh, you know I think we've we've crafted this in a way that we can make a very uh, compelling argument that uh, you know even though this may not be as good as some of the other smaller market agreements there are some really good reasons for that let's talk about London Mark obviously uh, it was announced today that two games this year the home game again or the road game against Chicago right. followed by the home game against New England the Jags will continue to play one game a year there will be some circumstances where the league could ask for a second game. Explain that. Well, that's where we are right now. Yeah. And first, let me clarify that. The Jaguars aren't saying we're going to play one game a year. We're saying we want to have the option to play one game a year. Okay. This is a very long agreement. And there could be circumstances. Well, perhaps maybe we won't take that option up. You never know. But over 30 years, we need to keep that optionality um, because it has become part of our DNA. There's no question that when this new stadium comes online, uh, as far as how the stadium generates revenue for the club, it will be significantly improved. So the gap between what's in Jacksonville and what's in, in, in Wembley at Wembley will be narrowed. But the other thing I have to remind people is that not all our revenue is driven by what's happening inside our stadium. You know, a lot of our revenue is driven based on the size of this market. It's not the size of the crowd at the game. It's how many millions of people am I going to reach if I – uh, become a radio sponsor of the Jaguars, if I'm going to invest in preseason, if I'm going to be a sponsor and do market uh, uh, place uh, extensions, if I'm going to put my name on that stadium, all of those things are influenced significantly by the size of the market. New stadium doesn't change the size of the market. And our London uh, program, by yes, yes, the stadium-to-stadium stadium comparison has always been important, but we're also growing our commercial presence 
in the UK outside of what happens with the stadium. So, so it has in the past and uh, um, uh, uh, presumably will continue to be part of our DNA because it, it, it gives us something distinctive. Um, and also, this isn't a one-way street in terms of that game. You can talk to many, many people um, who, uh, who, who can point to how important this is for Jacksonville and the number of jobs that have been created in Jacksonville facilitated by introductions that have been made and awareness of Jacksonville that has been created by the Jaguars playing in London. So it's, so it is a complex uh, question. I obviously understand where our fans are coming from, you know, uh, but again, it's 30 years and uh, you know, a lot of, th- a lot of things can change as far as the league is concerned. Uh, right now there is, there is a league requirement. Every thir- all 32 teams have to comply with this requirement. And that requirement is that the league has the option again, the option to require every team in the NFL to give up one home game for the international series every four years. That's been in place for four years, just for the last couple of years. Before that, it was once every eight years. I can tell you the league has never asked us to, to give up a game under that requirement, but anything that we do, we have to make sure we're not violating what the league rules are because then the league won't approve the lease. In terms of looking at the timeline for everything, uh, do you still feel like it'll be, is it 26 where limited capacity, but games here and then 27 have to play somewhere else? Yes, and that was one of the real learnings that we went through with the uh, uh, the huddles, the 20-plus huddles we did uh, about a year ago. You know, we, we heard feedback from our fans, let's get this done as soon as we can, and let's do it in a way that we lose the fewest number of games outside of Jackson. Because we gone for years. And as, as we went through that, we went back uh, uh, to the architects, went back to the construction managers, and challenged them to come up with a plan that, uh, that would allow us to only be away for one year. And they came up with that. There's several things they had to do. One is they need to start sooner. So if this gets approved, we'll start doing some of the work outside the stadium actually next uh, February or March. So oh, right that's around awesome. the corner. Um, so they have to start early because they're going to be missing some time during what would be the 2026 20, season. And then because they have work they have to do principally on the, uh, on the ramps on the south end of the stadium, um, we, for public safety reasons and work they need to do, you have to close the upper deck. So that will take our capacity uh, down uh, from its current number to about 43,500. So we'd be playing 2026 in front of 43,500 fans, which just about takes care of all our season ticket holders. Okay. Uh, and then in 2027, we would have to go away. And the, the primary reason for that is it takes about nine months to lift the roof into place. So it's, it's, there's, there wow. is no solution around that other than get rid of the roof. And if we get rid of the roof, we get rid of the shade. And if we get rid of the shade, we never should have done it, the project to begin with. Because <laughs> that was the number one thing yeah. and right. from the fan yeah. uh, response that you received. Absolutely. Right. I mean, there were a lot of things fans wanted, and the, and the design we think is, is, uh, is, is meeting uh, all, uh, uh, most, if not every single one of those primary objectives, uh, but having shade on the seats. To do a project and not cool down the east side of the stadium during games in September, that'd be such a disservice to our fans. Yeah, yeah you, you said one thing you really learned from that was not just shade, but rain. I mean, I mean, not just you, – you told me that that surprised you a little bit. It did a little bit, yeah, because we don't get a lot of rain. But, yeah. but, but we also learned that from concert promoters. Yeah. Okay. Because cause stadium concerts happen during the summer, as you know, and everybody knows our weather in the summer predictable we're probably going to get some rainstorms uh, every other day or so and and the concerts happen at night and weather's usually not a problem with that heat's not a problem at night but what is the problem when they're building when they're loading in the concert for five days before and they're unloading it for three days afterwards and these are highly synchronized uh, movements of these tours if all of a sudden they have to shut down for three hours every other day for rain it makes it a less desirable place to go to a couple other things uh, because you, you got a lot of people wanting to talk to you here so i won't <laughs> keep you too long um down to Gainesville and Orlando, I think people know that. When do you make that decision? Uh, the conversations with those two groups. Well, we we uh, um, we're not spending a lot of energy on it right now. Okay. I can tell you that, because if we don't get the stadium deal done, that's wasted energy. Yeah. Okay, but we have been doing due diligence. I know there's great interest from Orlando and there's great interest from from Gainesville. We have sent uh, due diligence teams to both stadiums. That included representatives of the Jaguars, Jaguars football operations, and the NFL. The NFL is going to be a key um, uh, influencer on where the games are ultimately played. We've sent them to both uh, markets. Um, 
both of both of those cities have pluses and minuses. Uh, both of them have more pluses than minuses. Okay, Gainesville is closer. We have a really good relationship with the University of Florida, and that relationship is growing. We are so thankful that the University of Florida chooses to play University of Georgia every year in Jacksonville. We don't, from a Jaguars perspective, we don't take that for granted. It's the clo- it's closer than Orlando, and we got a lot of Gators here in this this part of the country. Uh, the mayor notwithstanding, <laughs> which always kids me about. Okay? Um, but it's not an NFL stadium. There's some there's some physical things that would need to be addressed. You can't get a camera card along the sidelines because the stands to the, to the benches are are so tight. Um, and while um, I'm sure most SEC schools take joy in putting their visiting teams in uh, high school level locker rooms when they visit. <laughs> at best. That's not the way it works in the <laughs> right. NFL. So the right. visiting team locker room at Florida Field would never pass most with the NFL, which means you need to build a, 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 a temporary locker room. And you can do that. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Camping World Stadium is a little, it's 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 a little longer. Um, it's it's easier for people to fly in there. It's it may be easier for our fan base uh, that is to the south, uh, particularly those in the Daytona Beach area. Uh, we do have some Jaguar fans in the um, uh, the or, the communities that are east of of Orlando. Some people enjoy going to Orlando for a weekend. Yeah. Uh, there's probably a little more to do. There's certainly more hotel options. Uh, Camping World Stadi- Stadium has hosted. Uh, uh, NFL games in the past, including the most recent Pro Bowl. So there, there are two unbelievably great options for us, and uh, uh, both, both entities are, are very interested. Uh, some of it has to do with seeing what the schedules are like, so and then what the NFL says. But we will, we will get to that if if we if we get a deal done. Um, I would expect that that would be resolved before the end of the year. Final question for you: The stadium is so cool. We know SoFi, and I keep saying it's a little SoFi, and it's probably not doing it justice. But that's the, my my. Easy elementary mind, I can explain it. It's got a roof, doesn't have sides, mm-hmm. natural grass. Is that the hope? It the has a possibility. Yeah. What, what, what we want to have is the is the best surface for our players. Yeah. And there continues to be evolution in in um, uh, field surfaces. Uh, there's uh, uh, a lot of uh, facilities that are going with a hybrid grass, which is a combination of artificial with real, which is actually Lambeau and Wembley. Wembley has what they call a deso field. Oh. So, so if all the grass died on that field, you would look down there and you'd still be able to play because it, it also has artificial. So I think we'll wait and see. We have the ability to do both. I think there's a lot of the technology of artificial fields that are going on right now for player safety reasons, and, uh, uh, but we would, have, we would have the possibility. I mean, if you, in a perfect world, we'd rather have an artificial field because it's a lot easier to operate. Sure. Uh, but if, the, if, if, if for the, uh, the health and safety of our players – the best solution is either a hybrid or a fully natural grass. We can do that. It makes it a little more difficult because you have to bring grow lights in. Right. The, uh, the, uh, uh, the, the fabric that we're using for the roof does allow light to come through. In fact, there's been some studies that have been conducted at uh, the University of Tennessee uh, in their, their, their uh, uh, school of horticulture where they're actually growing grass through this, what's called a viewscape material. So the, we, it, it could be natural grass, but we don't have to make that decision right now. We just have to make sure we build in flexibility to do what's the right. Because we may decide that in the first year, or the first five years, is like I said, this is a long-term commitment. First five years, maybe it's a hybrid, and then maybe artificial turf to then begin outperforming. You'd want to be able to replace that or vice versa. Mark Lamping, president of the Jaguars. I know you're going to get a lot of questions about the stadium. Uh, you did a great job on that, uh, and, uh, and I appreciate you doing these five. I know people are going to come out here. I already see them filing in here. <laughs> great job. Thanks for spending some time with me. Yeah, and again, don't, this, is, this, this is the mayor's initiative. Yeah. This is not, yeah. this is, the Jaguars are, are, are participating along with the mayor, but this, this is really Mayor, mayor Deegan's initiative and certainly applaud yeah. her for, yeah. for arranging this. And I, and I will tell you, I love how excited she is about this, Mark. I, I, you said earlier, I, I, this is a big deal to her, and that is a cool thing. So I think you're exactly right. Yep. Mark well, thank Lamping, you guys. The, thanks, Mark. We appreciate it. Mark Lamping, president of the Jaguars. Back in a moment.